Penn and Teller just got fooled. Will they get fooled again? Let's meet our next act and find out. These cards become unshuffled. I'm so excited to be back. Did I fool Penn <gasps> and tell this last time on the show? The experience was very nerve wracking. I mean, it was tense. It says, Paul Gertner, you fooled us. Can you see that? <laughs> Fortunately, the trick did not fail. But this time, it's going to take a, a, a little more than that. One of the techniques I use to come up with solutions is what I call dream storming. It's planting the, the problem in your head as you go to sleep and your subconscious works on it. It's basically dreaming up solutions. When you wake up, ideas come up that you didn't have before, dream storming. Fool us historians will certainly remember our next magician. Fool us virgins, let me introduce you to Paul Gertner. <laughs> well, Penn and Teller, it is a pleasure to be back again on Full Us, and I'm very excited to be here this year because I get to bring my favorite magic illusion, the cups and balls. Now, I know you're very familiar with this trick because you perform it. But for those in the audience that are not, let me explain. It's based on an old gambling scam known as the Three Shell Game. Now, part of the game is that the ball is soft, it's made of sponge, and the cup is solid, it's made of brass, metal. So whenever that ball is under the cup, you can't see it. <laughs> and when the magician mixes them around, you can't hear it. And at any given time, the magician can make that ball disappear. Now, of course, well, Penn and Teller already know the secret to this trick. The secret to this trick is you use an extra ball. And you always hide the extra ball underneath the cup on your right. So I'm going to perform the trick, but I'm going to do it a little differently. Because I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And in Pittsburgh, we manufacture steel. And when I was a kid and I was looking for a ball to do the trick with, I found one in my dad's toolbox. It was a steel ball bearing. You see, my dad was a steel worker in Pittsburgh. In fact, my favorite childhood memory of dad is the day he and I shared a drink after work together. <laughs> it happened in our kitchen. I was practicing this trick all day long. And dad came home from work, hot, tired, and thirsty. And I said, dad, would you watch my new trick? And he says, oh, okay, okay, but first I need a drink. And he went to the refrigerator and he poured himself a cold beer. And then he set a glass in front of me and he poured me a Coke. <laughs> and once dad and I had our refreshments, well, I got a chance to show him this trick. But I was a kid. I didn't know you were supposed to do the trick with a little sponge ball. And I put Dad's steel ball under the cup, and I mixed them around, and I said, Dad, where's the ball? And of course, he knew immediately. And pretty soon I figured it out that you can't fool anyone with a steel ball and a metal cup because of the element of sound, unless, unless you could cause the sound in the ball to disappear and travel over here inside your pocket. Now, that's what it looked like the first time. I'll do that again. This time, Allison, I'll let you take a guess. If you watch the ball, take a guess. Which cup do you think I just slipped that ball under? Which one? <laughs> well, no, look, I'll explain, Allison. Remember, you always hide the extra ball underneath the cup on your right. <laughs> But of course, Allison, in my book, no matter what you choose, you're a winner. You're a winner. Three cups to three balls. Now we're ready. Now we're ready to start the trip. Now, if you watch the ball right here, whenever I give it a little push, okay, it will actually penetrate right through the top, balanced on the edge. I'll do that again. This time, the ball will go right through the top of not one, but actually two cups, like this, balanced on the edge. But I want everyone to know exactly where the balls are. So whenever I place a ball under a cup, I'll give it a little shake and you'll hear it under the cup. Okay, and here we go. Ball number one, under cup number one. Ball number two, under cup number two. And ball number three, under cup number three. And if I take two of them invisibly, and I set them on the middle, and I give them a little tap, you see now, these two are empty because they've all come together in the center. 
Thank you. Thank you. But you know, it is the end of the trick. And when I do this at trade show exhibits, this is the part that gathers the biggest crowds to watch closely. You see, I actually take the ball out from under the cup. And I say to somebody, watch, I'll remove one ball from the game. Like this. And then I put it in my pocket. And then I say, look, if I, if I remove another ball from the cup, Penn, how many would that leave underneath the center cup? One. Just one, I think. Yeah, just one. But if there's one there, you see there's another over there, and I'll show you how the trick is done. You see, I never really put the ball in the, in the hand. I never put it in the pocket. But while everyone's watching the pocket, I actually can slip the ball under the cup, and it looks like it was there all the while. But if I really get rid of it, Allison, this time take one last guess. How many balls do you think are underneath the center cup? One, two, or three? <laughs> For you, for you, Allison, I did all three. <laughs> but you know, you can't do this trick with just three balls. You need an extra one. And Allison, where did I say we always hide the extra ball? Uh, right. Exactly, exactly. Underneath the cup on the right. <laughs> but there's another extra ball right over there, and they're both pretty big, and they're both solid and pretty heavy, but underneath the center cup is the biggest one of all, because there it is. No, that's not it. That's the biggest one. But I can't figure out where it comes from. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Penn and Teller, I said, I told you this trick was inspired by my dad, which is why I can't help but think of him every time I do it, which is why in this cup, I always keep dad's balls. <laughs> and, and in this cup, in honor of dad, I always keep a can of Coke. And, and in this cup, but remember, you always hide the extra ball underneath the cup on your right. <laughs> so, so, Dad, wherever you are, here's to you. Like okay, I fooled Penn and Teller. I'm I'm done. I, I like, but you just have to try try it twice. Well, I but, well, this was my favorite trick, yes. and 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 I, it's a, just a treat to come and just do the cups and balls for them. Yeah. And I just couldn't do just the cups and balls. I had to throw a little kicker in. So yeah, you seem to specialize in kickers. Yeah, well, I think um, all magic should have that. I mean, that's what magic's all about. It's about having that little moment at the end where someone thinks the end is there, and then all of a sudden, boom, you hit them one more time. Wow. Okay, you know? time to see if they got it. Penn Teller, what do you think? Uh, we first heard about you, Paul, doing the, uh, the, the cups and balls. And it's not fair to say that you're just doing the cups and balls. Because for, for hundreds of years, maybe thousands, people have done the cups and balls. And it's always been a visual trick. And your genius is making it also an audio trick. And that is something that from the first moment I saw you do it absolutely blew my mind. Having that sound to do at the same time. But what people don't know who don't know how the trick is done don't know is that you found special slights and special handlings just to deal with the sound. Yeah, if you were to write a book on this, which I imagine you will someday because it's so brilliant, uh, you will have to have a whole separate thing on how you make the sounds come from a different place than they actually are and absolutely be beautiful like that. Also, in magic, you know that um, certain things are just compressible. We all know sponge balls are compressible. Mm -hmm. Indeed, almost everything else used in every magic act is compressible. We all know how to make all sorts of things look solid that are actually compressible. You cannot do that with ball bearings. And some people would say, uh, when they know how a trick is done, that that makes the, that makes the glass half, em half empty. But I think when we know how a trick is done, it makes the glass half full. Mm -hmm. Do you know that they know what were you there talking about, how you did it? I think so. I think they, uh, they yeah, we're talking. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs>
listen, right. it's now a tie. You get us last time, we get you this time. <laughs> Season five, kick our asses. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. can give you time to think and blink. More Fool Us when we return.